Bit of a disaster. I've painted the ceiling with the wrong paint. <laughs> what I thought was walls and ceilings, Dulux, white mist, matte paint. And I've used this one in another room. What I ordered was <laughs> Dulux, walls and ceiling, white mist, silk. So now the ceilings have a sheen on them, which is not what I wanted because the sheen shows off all the imperfections in the ceiling. Now the ceiling has been here for like 130 years um, and so it is showing signs of aging, but I can't afford to have all of the ceilings in this house boarded. So unfortunately, I need to repaint this. Now the problem with painting matte onto silk is that you're meant to, according to the advice online, is you're meant to sand down the silk to create sort of a an anchor for the matte paint to sit on. That said, if you Google painting matte over silk, you'll um, you'll get a lot of people saying that you need to sand it or use a primer like a Zinnisa thing. But you'll also get people saying, "I've painted matte over silk for thirty years and never had a problem." And then there's other people that say, well, give it a go. And if it doesn't work, sand it back and then do it again. So, or use a primer afterwards. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use this super matte Dulux trade stuff and <laughs> give it a go. Um, if it doesn't work, then I'll have to have a go. That's, that's what I was going to put on the wall. So... I didn't really want them to be the same color. You can see, I don't know, you can't really see a difference. Um, it is a slightly different, it's not brilliant white. So whatever, I'm just gonna do it and see how it works and I'll show you when it's done. So I did a couple of tester patches and it's come out all right. I don't think I need to worry about uh, sort of crackling or whatever the expression is with matte on silk. It seems to be fine in this case. I don't know whether it's to do with the quality of paint I purchased or not. I mean, the tub that I got was 44 quid, so it was fairly expensive, but it looks so much better than the uh, the silk, I think. I'll see if I can get an angle where you can really see it sort of reflecting. Yeah, there you go. The reflection just stops at, uh, at the matte. So it looks so much better matte. Um, you won't see all the imperfections quite so much, which is good because there are a lot, a lot of imperfections in this ceiling. So it looks much, much nicer. So I'm going to paint the whole thing now. There we go. So sorted. It doesn't look too bad. It doesn't look great. The ceiling's in a in sort of bad shape, but that big old glare's gone and it didn't ruin anything surprisingly. So I've dodged a bullet there. There's uh, There are like a few sort of imperfections in the ceiling, but whatever. Can't afford to do everything. Not at the same time anyway. So you can still see light coming from the windows. There's not a sheen on the ceiling that I can see. It looks much, much better. I've run into yet another problem. So if you remember, in fact, let me show you. So if you remember these sockets, when they put them in, they use these sort of shields around the outside to protect them. Here's one. Because I haven't stripped the wallpaper from this room, which is my bedroom, they're still in. So what they have is like a shield that pops out so you can plaster right up against it. Problem is the distance between this socket and the bat box uh, the back box, back box, I don't know which one it is, is a lot bigger than it should be. So when I've come to put these back on now that I've painted, you'll see this screw is far too long. I looked up online and you could buy shorter screws, which is fine, but it does mean I have to wait. So I thought I'd try something. I'll try and cut this down. The only way I can think of doing it is by sawing it. But we're going to cheat and use the drill to spin it. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to work. But we just need to basically cut it down a little bit further than that line. So 
just to make it a bit easier. And we'll need to do two of them uh, to get this one in. I think it's going to be the same for all of these. So I might have to do a few. Even the smallest of my 3.5 uh, bolts is too long. So longer than that, uh, that little mark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on this drill. So put the screw into the drill or the bolt. <laughs> and I'm just going to use this, which I used for uh, cutting some plasterboard. And I'm going to see, it, see if it will cut the, uh, the bolt. Hopefully it will work. Well, here goes. What I'm going to do is pop this bolt in. Whoops. And I'm just going to put it in just past that section and tighten it up. Let's see. Okay. <laughs> really don't know if this will work. Okay, it is working. Don't know if you'll be able to see it, but right down here it is getting through. I don't know if it's going to mess with the thread, so that's the thing. That is good enough. So I don't know how much you'll be able to see, but just here, in fact, if I take it out a little, is it hot? No, not really. So hopefully, against the black of my shirt, does that work? Or against the white of the wall? Hopefully you can see that, but I should just be able to snap it in two. There we go, let's try it out. There we go, screwdriver. You're currently sat on my knee, so not sure how wobbly the camera will get. Okay, it's taking the screw. So let's do another one. <laughs> That'll do. Not hot, which is good. Okay, I didn't cut this one quite enough. There we go, that'll do. Number two. Let's see if we can get this one to work. I really struggle finding the thread. Hmm, doesn't like this one quite so much. Oh, there we go. That's mated together, I think. Maybe I just had to take a bit of the burr off. Whoops. Might have to clean the bottom of this hole because it's just popped that out, which is a shame. No, so I'm going to have to clean up here, look. Not quite perfect. That's all right, nothing about filler can't help. Let's pop this back out and, and check out what's going on. I imagine there's just like a little bit of a burr underneath that's popped that out. Yeah, there is a bit here that I didn't really look at, which is a shame because it has snapped off the little retaining clip. So that now moves quite freely. Annoyingly, it's fine though. Um, I'm just gonna leave it or maybe glue it. I might glue it in. I know they're meant to be removable, but I'd rather it be okay. I mean, generally you don't pull on it, so probably okay. And I probably won't be unplugging and plugging things in very often. So maybe I'll leave it. I can glue it another time. But for now, I'm just gonna
there we go that should be enough of that cleared out let's test yeah there we go still wants to push out that's the cable pushing it now Oof, do I worry about that nah <laughs> I've got bigger things to worry about than just a little bit thing like that oh well that worked though so I'm pretty pleased cutting down those bolts at least worked the rest of the stuff it's just one thing after another isn't it so I've now sort of roughed up the skirting board in here so I'll be ready to paint it shortly but I need to get this carpet up so I can get a good finish and we've got all these sort of carpet holders so they have to come up they're all nailed in unfortunately so I'll have to get the crowbar out again but I mentioned urban archaeology well this is what I mean, is lots of newspapers that are underneath this carpet. Let's see if I can pull one out that's got a date on it. So when this carpet was laid was January the 13th, 1974. So there'll be some absolutely questionable stuff, especially since this is the news of the world. Murder link in Hunt for Mr. Big. Oh, look, central heating of the future. Pleasure trip to the Isle of Man. Oh, wow, look at this. So we've got Enter the Dragon. The Bruce Lee film. Wow, that's cool. Well, I'm sure I'll find some other bits that we can take a look at. So as I'm going through, taking up the carpet, I'll, uh, I'll show you any of the interesting ones. Quick little tour of the room before I actually get properly started. So carpet is all around here. I'm gonna take it up and we'll see what it looks like afterwards. I already know this part of the floor's ruined. Well, not ruined, it just needs some cleanup. But the rest of the floor should look all right, albeit with some damage from the electricians, I imagine, hidden away under the carpet, so I couldn't see it. But here goes. It might seem weird what I'm doing, <laughs> sweeping the carpet. Um, and it is a little bit weird, but there's loads of dust and mess left over. So what I'm gonna do is roll up the carpet with all of that dust and mess in it. That way it'll contain it, hopefully. It's all going on a skip anyway. <laughs> Realize this is getting a bit dull, but trick with these things, you've got your blade here. Fine touching it that way, don't, don't do it the other way. You can undo this thing. Let's do that now. And you'll see the blade in there. This one also has replacement blades here. I don't need replacement blades, I just need to swap the blade around. So just spin it. Hook it back in. This one's kind of a bit finickety. Are you gonna go in? There you go. Pop this back on. There we go, fresh blade. Hopefully you saw that, who knows. It's actually hard work cutting carpet. <laughs> There we go, it's done. Now, I'm just gonna use a bit of packing tape to secure the carpet 
so it doesn't unroll. And this tape's quite sticky, so a little trick to stop it being so sticky is just to sort of get your greasy mitts over one side of it. We'll cut that, stick it there. Now this won't really stick to itself, which is good. Ready to use next time. Less of that picking away with fingernail stuff. so much better. That's brilliant. Might as well just do a short section then. Oh, amazing. So it's just me today. There's no one else helping. I got my fireplace delivered on Thursday. I'll show you that in a minute. See if we can't maneuver it a bit so you can see it. So this is the one that's gonna replace the fire in the living room, in the front room. So we're getting there, We've got lots of newspapers to look at now. Uh, some interesting things I've spotted, so we'll have a, have a little look at them. We'll also look at some of the other things I've found in this room, because I can't remember if I've shown them to you, so we will have a look. Um, stuff that was inside the chimney, so um, we'll have a butcher's at that. This is going rather well, it's a lot easier than I imagined. Anyway, I'll let you watch the rest of it. Right, that's it done. So <laughs> you'll notice something interesting here, that uh, there's sort of black paint around the outside of the room. And that's, you know, sort of expected. <laughs> so back when, I don't know when exactly this happened. So, oh, I've just noticed. There's the old electrical cable that comes in from outside. I'm gonna take that out. Um, I don't know when exactly, but fitted carpets didn't used to be a thing. Or well, certainly not a very popular thing. And so what you, what you do is you paint the outside of your room and then you'd cover the rest with a rug. So that's where a rug would have been, which is why it's not been painted, which is fine, I'm not bothered. I'm gonna carpet in here because the floorboards aren't in great nick. So they'll probably put some kind of underlay down. I need to get the hoover out and sort this out. Also, what's this? That must be some kind of stone for the fire. Uh, this needs to come out. So maybe we'll, oh, we'll do that now. Let's see if we can't lift this floorboard up. Mm, don't really want to. Well, there we go. I've got the board out and I've already had a look around. Where is that torch? So, there's our gas pipe. Look how crudely it was bent. And if I just bring you around the other way, you can see that there's a bit there where it goes across. We should be able to see it over here. And then I'm not quite sure where that runs, honestly. And I'm not gonna go digging up a load more floorboards to find out. I'm fairly sure it's a gas pipe. <laughs> But I wanted to check, so I went and got um, when I got my meter, stuck it into continuity mode, and shoved it on this pipe. Now I did think the earthing 
might connect that. However, I remembered I had all the other gas lines removed from the meter, so there is only one gas line now. So this is safe to take out. I may just bend it and just shove it under the floorboards rather than just get rid of it. It's not a problem I'm gonna tackle now though. So this is the fireplace. I love it. It's very heavy, but I am able to lift it on my own just with a bloody a lot of effort. It's nice and detailed. It's been polished up and um, it's had this, I think it's like graphite stuff put on it to, to keep it looking good. It looks like it's missing some stuff, but it's not. Um, they're just here, they're removable. So that's the front grill and the vent plate. And the vent plate just goes here, just sits there and you open that when you want to have a fire. I probably won't be using this as a fire. It depends what happens with energy prices, obviously. Um, but this is going to go in the living room. So you'll just have to imagine it there instead. So that big surround's coming out and this, this fire here is going to come out or the insert. Um, but I'm not going to do that today. I need some help with it. So it's just too big to really attack on my own. So I'll, I'll wait until someone's here. Um, I don't know how much video I've recorded. So since I did my last video, so I think we'll call it, actually, you know what? We'll, I said about urban archeology, span let's do that. And then, yeah, let's do that. So we're largely done. Um, I'm happy. It just needs hoovering now, really. And a bit of tidying up. Same difference though. Um, so we'll do some urban archeology. span I've selected some newspapers, which I thought were quite interesting and they're very topical, uh, which is cool. And I've got a little box here with some little bits and bobs. I can't remember if I've shown you, so we'll, we'll take a look at those. Um, we'll try and do this pretty quickly. <laughs> so we've got, let me just sit down properly. Oh, get rid of that little kneeling pad, I'll just cross my legs. So we've got the Sunday Mail from January the 6th, 1974. Got the Tom Goodall file, no idea. Lifeline, the face of a man against the sea. A man who does not know if he will win or lose, live or die. Uh, what have we got on the other side? Tanks stand for terror. There were fears last night that Russian made SAM missiles may have been smuggled into Britain by Arab terrorists. Um, that's the, the headline on the Sunday Post. Massive security alert at London airport yesterday in case of a terror attack. Russian spy, fear in Dublin. Industry threatened with two day week. Not quite sure what that is. Oh, captain lifted off stricken ship. Wow, okay. Not super interesting, but maybe they'll get more interesting. Dons, Dundee, Dons, Dundee and Glamour. I don't know anything about sport really, but look at that. This one I thought was incredibly interesting. So the secret life of Lady Jane. Lady Caroline Jane Wellesley Favourite party game is charades. Apparently the 22 year old daughter of the Duke of Wellington is rather good at it and is a wow at dressing up. Uh, which all fits in with the royal charade that's going on, all the, de all the denials of romance and just good friend games. Lady Jane and Prince Charles, now King Charles III, there he is, are playing at the moment because it's Odds on that Prince Charles, its current naval duties constitute the usual period of separation before the royal announcement is made. So they're basically saying here that King Charles III or Prince Charles back in 1974 was going to be dating this lady, Lady Jane. Interesting. I'll give it a little scan and then you guys can read it at your leisure. That is, even if it's in focus, I haven't got a clue. 
Ooh, what's that say? Kisses. Her buddies aren't quite the girls from the office either. Ooh. Well, there we go. Ah. Uh, her egg flew up the chimney. Not a clue what that one's about. I don't know if I want to know. Ooh, look, TV today. So, BBC One. What have we got? Anything interesting? Economics of the real world. Undersea world of Jacques Cousteau. That's pretty cool. Film, Laughter in Paradise. Trying to fulfill terms of a crazy will. Okay. Another film, How to Murder Your Wife. Disappointing, it says, one star. <laughs> Love it. Oh, and they've got a radio schedule too. And then we've got, oh, we've got more TV. Again, Undersea World of Jacques Cousteau. Laughter in Paradise. Is this a repeat? Yeah, it is. The Great Killer Road. 18 people were killed on the Great North Road last year. Some died in, oh, this is sad. Let's uh, skip that, shall we? My top 10 for 1974. Growth, where will investors find it in 1974? Okay. So in 1974, oh, hello. We'll come back to this. A candle burns in gloomy days for Ted Heath, more ways than one, during the power crisis. Yes, power crisis, that's what I was gonna say. In the 1970s, they had, um, it was like the oil crisis or something. I know that we had a little bit of a recession. I say a little bit, I don't know these things for certain. Um, what else have we got? Marlon Brando. Marlon Brando to spend $3 million about the slaughter of the West of Wild West Indians, he'll play the part of conscience, conscience ridden army colonel, and his share of the profits will go to Indian charities. Is that the film where did it win an Oscar or something? And he sent a native Indian actress to accept the award the award instead and she gave a speech and I think oh who was it who's that wild west dude dirty Harry guy anyway he was apparently very angry I think that was him Clint Eastwood Gracie Fields I recognize that name nobody else though fire that looks depressing the bath that fell through the floor. Look at that. Oh, and there's a crossword. I tell you what, here you go. Hopefully it's in focus. I don't know how the focus works on this camera. War on the bomb. Hmm. Now cigarettes to go on ration. Smokers are the latest victims of the energy crisis. Again, that's why I thought this was pretty topical. So 1974, they're going on an energy crisis. They're talking about like two, three day weeks because petrol's running out, they can't get any. You know, the power cuts and stuff. And we might end up with the same thing, honestly. I don't know what's gonna happen. Well, there we go. Oh, Peggy's their pinup girl. An elderly, oh, when, when Peggy, an elderly Labrador was brought into the Cardonald cat and dog home in Glasgow. Last June, staff could tell two things at a glance. She was well-groomed. Oh, is it? I've lost my place. 
She was well groomed and had obviously been a family pet, and she was an expectant mum. Ah. Oh. Cute. Right. The other thing is this box of treasures. Now, these some of these things came out of the fireplace, and I cannot, for the life of me, remember if I showed you these at the time. But um, some of these bits of torn up paper are love letters. This one says, "Am am sorry." and then written, I think I might be, I'm sorry I haven't written sooner or something. Um, I'm sure one of them says like, oh, I can't, Fanny at the top there, can you see that? Or Harry maybe, it could be Harry. And so I, I haven't tried to piece it together because I think it'd be too difficult. And that one says, before was not it's too, it's too difficult to piece that together. If anyone knows of a good way of just getting Photoshop to figure it out or something, uh, to get the, I don't know, some more kisses on the back. But it was torn up and thrown inside the chimney, not burnt. Now that probably says, dear, maybe. Does it fit with this bit? No. So other bits that were inside the chimney, this dry cleaning bill, uh, there's no date on it. Well, there is, there's 29th of January. I don't know when that would be. And it doesn't really say much. There were these cigarettes. There are no cigarettes in it, but these are Craven A Virginia cork tipped cigarettes. I don't know when they're from. I can't tell, there's no date on the box. Not that I could see, but super interesting this was also in the chimney and it is simple decimal calculations so the uk in the 60s i don't know when exactly we moved to decimal coinage so we did have like d or something i don't know i don't know all of the things but basically someone's homework i'm guessing on how to do simple decimal calculations or it simply is about um, just doing coin stuff I don't know but I thought it was interesting that it was just screwed up and thrown in the chimney uh, the other thing we've got here is this box of matches oh, there you go Scottish bluebell matches they, this doesn't date the box in any way because these have been made for donkeys years but inside this box when I when the, um, the chimney sweep took it out of the chimney, he started to think it was a bit, <laughs> a bit crazy that it was finding all these things, but there was a marble in here. So just a little marble. And then I found this, uh, George V penny from 1919. And that wasn't in the chimney, that was in under the skirting board downstairs. And then there's a an earring, it won't be, that won't be really old. And some beads again, they won't be really old. But I'm gonna keep them all in that little matchbox. Just as a little sort of keepsake. And then other things are just some bit much older newspaper from downstairs. Um, so these are like wartime kind of things. So there's probably a date somewhere if we can, if we get lucky. Oh yeah, there we go. So that says... Uh, January the 13th, 1944. So during the Second World War. So this is my little box of keepsakes. I'll go through it, get rid of the stuff that doesn't need to be kept, keep a few key items, and then that'll be it. So I'll probably get rid of the love note, honestly. But that's it for today. And that's it for the video. So I'll see you next time. We might be having guests, I'm not sure, uh, to come and stay and help out. There's there's a bit still left to do, so I've got to do, I'll run you through the list quickly. Skirting boards, so I've got to paint the ones in here, but I've got to put skirting boards elsewhere around the house. 
This has to get carpeted. Um, I need to rip the carpet off the stairs, but I've got one room left to, to strip paper off. That's my bedroom. And then to get skimmed or replastered, it depends on what happens with the walls. It might be more of that ripping a wall down stuff. Um, and I want to get the floor sanded in the dining room. I've got to put skirting in there too. So if sanding happens, then that'll be after that. What else? There's got to be more. Yeah, I don't really know now. I'm tired. It's probably about six o'clock. So I'm going to call it quits for the day. All right, bye.